Welcome back, everybody. Today I got a chance to sit down and start taking a look at some of the parts that the previous owner has already assembled. There are the stabilators that are completely riveted and closed. Uh, I'm going to look for an access hole in there somewhere. I haven't tried yet, but I might buy a boroscope just to internally look around. But if not, I don't think I'm going to take them apart. This rudder had yet to be riveted, so it was easy enough to disassemble. And so I figured I'd take a look at the interior workmanship and see how it looked. One of the critical parts was the bend angle in the drive horn. I wanted to make sure that that was relatively close to the five degrees called for by the plans. It looks good by eye, but uh, I decided to double check that with a little digital level and flat surface. So I zeroed the level to the surface that wasn't necessarily level, but uh, yeah, sure enough, it was just barely over five degrees, so uh, Steve did a good job on that bend. There were just a few nicks along the edges of certain parts, which I wanted to smooth out because any nick in or rough edge can eventually become some sort of a, uh, a stress riser or a potential place for failure. It's not as critical and important in the thicker parts like the drive horn, but at the same time, it only takes a few minutes to uh, clean them up, smooth them out. Uh, radius the edges and, and it'll all look better painted after running ways. It may be a little bit excessive to worry about the uh, sheet metal corners, uh, at least the exterior ones, or let's call them uh, the sharp points, the convex corners. And I just want to round those gently because those sharp points will eventually be under the skin somewhere and could create a stress point in that. And it might be, like I said, it might be overkill, but that's just the way I see it. So. I can't do much about the work that's already completed, but uh, from this point forward on the parts that I work on, I'm going to do my best to make sure they are deburred in every uh, internal and external corner or radius, just gently, nothing severe. I am sure you get the idea by now, so I'm going to speed up the video for this part and uh, throw a little music behind it. Enjoy!
I see an awful lot of kit planes that are being polished. I'm not sure if that's just a trend thing or if it uh, uh, appeals to a retro look from back in the day before they started painting planes. But uh, I think it looks fantastic, but I don't think it's going to be for me. After talking to a few people and Matt out there at Left Seat Adventures, uh, he tells me you can get cooked in the cockpit there from the sun reflecting off the wings and whatnot so I decided that I want to paint my plane well I'm not I don't necessarily want to paint it but uh, I want a painted plane and seeing how I'm building it then I guess I'm gonna paint a plane now I've only painted smaller items before so this should be quite the adventure for myself but uh I'm sure if I break it into smaller parts and paint each component as I move along, it shouldn't be that hard. Now, what I'm doing here is using some fine Scotch-Brite pads to try and remove some of the polish on the parts that Steven had already done. Um, I'll probably have to do this a few different times, but I at least want to focus on the areas where the rivets are once they're final assembled, so then I can go back right up to the final point of painting and continue to uh, get a nice even uh, scuffed surface along the entire aircraft. Then I believe it'll be some sort of a epoxy primer and then I will be using, I'm not sure what brand yet, but I think a single stage paint to uh, try and keep it simple. The base coat, clear coat thing uh, it just seems like a lot of extra hassle, and I don't see a lot of people using that on planes, so... Anyways, I'll, I'll figure something out for a pattern, or stripes, or... I'm not sure. But, uh, have you guys have any great suggestions, or want to put some links to some paint schemes that you like in the comments below? I'd be sure to, uh, look there on a regular basis and, uh, see what you guys have to offer. You guys definitely don't want to watch me do this all, so one more time, let's uh, speed up the film and throw a little background music there for you to enjoy.
Okay, let's see if we can get this back together. Now let me know if you think what I'm doing is absolute overkill and unnecessary, or if you just think I'm being uh, uh, thorough. After all, it is going to be my butt on the line up there in the air, so I just want to do a nice job. And, uh, you know, if for some reason I don't own this plane sometime later in life, I kind of feel responsible for the workmanship that somebody else is going to trust, too, so... If you see anything that I'm doing that looks incorrect, please let me know. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep plugging along here and let me know in the comments what you think. Polished plane, painted plane, recommendations for different paints. Um, you know, this is my first time. So to be honest with you, I could use all the advice that I can get and you know, I know the opinions are like, uh, you know, a rear orifice. Everybody has one. But honestly, I'd like to see what you guys have to say, especially the guys that have done this before, because it is my first time. And I generally try and be smart enough to learn from other people's mistakes whenever possible. If I only had a third hand, things like that wouldn't happen. I'm not really sure what these plastic components are made from. I'm going to ask the guys. It definitely doesn't feel like fiberglass. I've worked with fiberglass before. And uh, these seem to be possibly some sort of vacuum formed material. So I'm not sure how to work with it, but I'm just trying to clean up the edges like I did with the aluminum. Uh, smooth out any rough spots, make sure there's nothing jagged that will allow for a failure at some point later on down the road. I did figure out that filing, sanding, scotch braiding, and whatnot over the plans is a bad idea. All that fine aluminum just makes a big gray mess on the diagrams, and I won't do that again. So, see, I'm getting smarter already. Please remember that if you like these videos and what I'm putting out there to, well, to like them, hit the little like button, uh, subscribe to my channel and share these with a friend that you might en enjoy them as much as you do. So I'm going to get this back together and then go look for another piece to tear apart and see what happens. Thanks again.